Hey, what's up guys? Today, I'll show you a science fiction series, Altered Carbon Season 1, Episode 6. Spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. In this world, gorgeous neon lights illuminate this bizarre metropolis. Some people possess unlimited wealth and infinite life, while others live a miserable life like cockroaches in the darkest corners of the city. Tarkeshi has got himself into lots of troubles, since he agreed to investigate the murder of Lawrence. Today, he witnesses a killer disguised as a police officer, taking the hitman out of the police station before the killer injured Beauty. Tarkeshi panics when he sees Beauty is covered in blood. He drives Beauty to a hospital in an air car in a hurry. However, when they arrive at the hospital, they are told that because Beauty doesn't have any money in her account, she won't receive any treatment, no matter how badly she is injured. Tarkeshi pays the medical bills for Beauty, with the money he got from Lawrence for the investigation. Beauty is sent to the operation room in time, and gets a brand new mechanical arm. Her stack was unharmed during the attack, but her body was seriously injured, especially her arm. She has two options. The doctor either amputates the injured arm and fits a new one for her, or takes her stack out and puts it into a new sleeve. Apparently, the first option is safer. So Tarkeshi makes the decision for her, buying her the most expensive arm, and having it fitted while Beauty is in a coma. Tarkeshi receives a call from the receptionist from the Raven Hotel, when Beauty's operation has finished. Recently, the receptionist has been helping Tarkeshi while he has been investigating the murder, because the receptionist is an AI and his brain has access to the internet. Not long ago, Tarkeshi and Beauty was searching Lawrence's son's house, and discovered an expensive 3D bio-organic printer and a clone of Lawrence. Sometimes Lawrence's son would use Lawrence's clone and pretend to be him. The 3D printer is exceptionally expensive, even for Lauren's son who was born into a meth's family. It is not easy to purchase such a luxury item. Tarkeshi speculates that Lawrence's son gets help from somewhere else. Tarkeshi is right. A while ago, Lawrence's son sold lots of his valuable painting collection. Some of the paintings were sold at a price much higher than they should be. It seems to be money laundering. The receptionist also finds out that a newly founded shell company bought all of Lawrence's son's paintings. And the buyer, the registrar of the company, is also a meth called Brevlov. Turkeshi is familiar with the name Brevlov, who is Lauren's son's close friend. If Lauren's son cooperates with Brevlov, the two of them may be able to topple Lawrence. The case is getting clearer. Turkeshi rushes to Lauren's son's home without any hesitation to question him. Brevlov is also there. Tarkeshi beats Brevlov and Lauren's son up, and then takes them to Lauren's mansion in the Arium. Tarkeshi would like Lauren's son to get this all out in the open. When Lauren's was killed, he lost 48 hours of memory. Tarkeshi is helping Lauren's find out what happened during that period of time and who killed him. Tarkeshi learns from the recording at Fight Room that before Lauren's was killed, Lauren's went there to watch a fight with his son. But somehow, they had a fight during the game and Lauren's nearly beat his son to death. All the evidence suggests Lauren's son has a motive for the killing of his father, while Lauren's is staring at his son and is going to punish him. Tarkeshi thinks of something, and tells Lauren's that it takes a deep kind of despair for his son to kill his father. The Lauren's son is a spoiled rich kid, he doesn't have the rage to kill his father in his eyes, which means the killer is not Lauren's son but somebody else. The reason why Lauren's son illegally cloned his father's sleeve is that he wants to prove himself to his father. He pretended to be his father and dealt with the business for Lawrence. All he wants is just his father's respect. He doesn't want his father to think he is a useless loser, so he bought a 3D printer to print his father's sleeve. He is not an evil child who can kill his father, although in Lawrence's eyes his son has always been a loser. Lawrence picks up a metal stick from the floor and smashes the sleeve that his son cloned until the body is mangled beyond recognition. While Lawrence is venting his anger, the ghost man is reporting to his boss with the hitman. His boss is also the hitman's other sleeve's boss, who gave the order to bring Tarkeshi from the Raven Hotel to him alive. However, the hitman dealt with the situation completely the wrong way. He pointed a gun at Tarkeshi without explaining, which resulted in the fight and the hitman's death. The hitman's two sleeves were like brothers. They cooperated with each other for over a hundred years. That's why the hitman swears to hunt Tarkeshi down to avenge the other sleeve's death. However, the boss didn't invite the hitman here to ask him to kill Tarkeshi. On the contrary, the boss needs the hitman to promise that he will never come for Tarkeshi or avenge him, because Tarkeshi is of great value to the boss. The hitman has been a gangster for many years. He always does what he wants. He is outraged when he is told that he can't have his revenge. 
He even vents his anger on the Ghost Man and calls him an attack dog of the boss. The Hitman and the Ghost Man have a quarrel that upgrades to a fight. The Hitman is no match to the Ghost Man, so he runs away. The Hitman escapes to a barber shop and lifts one of the seat cushions. He uses the remote transmission equipment hidden under there to transfer his consciousness to another sleeve, so that he can escape the Ghost Man's attack. The new sleeve that the Hitman is using is provided by the Fight Room's owner. This interstellar warrior clone sleeve is made with Tarkeshi's gene, and has quick sense and excellent combat skills like Tarkeshi. This sleeve is very rare and valuable. Now the Hitman in his new sleeve naturally becomes the Fight Room's owner's man, and has to work for him. The first assignment he gets is to kidnap Tarkeshi and Beauty, who previously came to the Fight Room to check the recordings. Fight Room is a grey industry venue. If the customers know there are cameras here, nobody will come here again. So the owner needs to shut Tarkeshi and Beauty up before more people know about it. There are many ways to do it. The best one is to kidnap them, bring them here, and let them fight in front of the audience. In this way, the owner of Fight Room can get rid of Tarkeshi and Beauty. He can also make some money from it. While the Hitman and the owner of Fight Room are planning this, Tarkeshi is in the hospital with Beauty. They have no idea what is coming for them. They are angry at the chief of the police at the moment, because the chief sells inside information of the police station for money. That's why the ghost man got the chance to take the hit now from the police station. The chief should be responsible for the death of Beauty's partner. Beauty hits the chief and throws him into the wall out of rage, using her new mechanical arm. The chief didn't expect things would go so far, and he is truly sorry for the loss of Beauty's partner. So he tells Beauty how to contact the person who paid him for the information, so that Tarkeshi and Beauty can find the ghost man and arrest him. The way the chief meets this mysterious guy is complicated. Every time they would go to a restaurant and meet each other and trade through VR, Tarkeshi and Beauty decide to meet that guy in VR. Interstellar warriors have a special power called controlling the construct. They can modulate the system and change their look in VR. Tarkeshi changes his look into the chiefs and meets the guy in VR. However, just after a short while, Beauty takes Tarkeshi's headset off and forces him back to reality. Beauty senses something is not right. It is the weekend today. The restaurant upstairs should be full of people and noisy. Instead, it is very quiet. Tarkeshi and Beauty go upstairs to check what is going on. They are astonished to see that all customers are killed, and the whole restaurant is in chaos. As they are checking, a grenade that emits a shockwave explodes and they both pass out after hitting the ground. The hitman takes them to Fight Room. When they wake up, they find themselves in an arena at Fight Room. Today, they are going to fight orc-like modify humanoids, barehanded. There is no reward for winning this fight, but if they lose, they will die. The owner of Fight Room has no intention to allow them to leave Fight Room alive. Tarkeshi and Beauty fight so hard to defeat the orc like creature, but it isn't over yet. Hitman joins the fight afterward. The Hitman is much quicker and stronger since he is using an interstellar warrior's sleeve. Tarkeshi and Beauty are no match to the Hitman. Very soon, they are both cut several times and injured. Just when the Hitman is aiming at Tarkeshi and Beauty's stacks and is going to finish them, Tarkeshi and Beauty coordinate a simultaneous attack on the Hitman instinctively. They knock him out with one accurate punch and take his stack out straight away. Tarkeshi destroys his stack, and the Hitman is now dead for good. Seeing that, the owner of Fight Room orders more men to enter the arena. He wants to see Tarkeshi and Beauty die there. Exhausted and injured, Tarkeshi and Beauty are not able to fight any longer. When Tarkeshi and Beauty are going to give up, and think they are going to die there. An armed masked assassin appears and kills all the men, who are attacking Tarkeshi and Beauty in no time. Tarkeshi can't believe he is saved. He uses all this strength to look up to the assassin. He would like to know who saved him. The assassin takes off her hoodie and calls Tarkeshi big brother. It looks like the assassin is very close to Tarkeshi. This is Angry Mustache Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your fun for today.